Hello, what's up? Welcome. Welcome to the Therapy Gecko Podcast. I'm Lyle. I'm a gecko. Uh, this is Viewer Mail Part 2. So, um, last week I did uh, a little experiment. I went on Instagram and I asked people to send me mail, to send me words. And uh, I wanted to see if I could do a podcast just talking alone with no phone calls. And I did it. And uh, I had an awesome time. I hope you guys liked that episode too. But most importantly, I enjoyed doing it. I had a good time. So uh, we'll, we're definitely going to make this, I don't, again, I don't know if it's a weekly thing, but it's definitely going to be a thing. It's definitely going to be a thing. I only, I got sent like 80 something emails and I only read like 20 of them. So today uh, I'm just going to read more for like an hour slash until I get bored and don't want to do it anymore. But first, I'm experimenting with some other, th- I want to talk about a couple things from my week. Um, one thing I really want to talk about is a magical thing that happened as a result of doing this viewer mail episode. So, um, last week I, um, I spoke about how, uh, I have this weird thing where I look myself up on Reddit a lot. It's a bad habit. I hate it. It's not productive. It's indulgent. I don't like it. It's bad thing to do. Um, but I, I do it. And I told the story about how one time I was looking myself up on Reddit and, uh, I found this post from this lady who like posted in my subreddit being like, um, I met the gecko in Austin after his show and I told him it was my birthday and he didn't say happy birthday and now I, I don't like him anymore. And she wrote this like big, like essay long uh, uh, rant about how like she, about how pissed off at me she was. And in the last week's episode, I talked about that and I said, um, I kind of was, I was like, I read that and I was like, well, you know, fuck this person. I was mad and I, and I expressed that I was mad at this person. Um, for writing this thing on Reddit, even though it didn't really matter. And anyway, um, so I talked about that in the episode, and then I was listening to the episode, like, the next day before I posted it. And I was listening back to me telling the story. I'm realizing how insane this all is. But I'm listening back to the story of me talking about this lady's Reddit post... And expressing that it it pissed me off. And I was like, I don't know if I should keep this part in. I don't know if I should keep this part in. Because like, ah, she she hears it. And then she makes another thing. She just gets pissed off. And um, I was going to take it out. I was about to take it out. And then I said to myself, you know what? No, I'm keeping it in. This is, I'm trying to authentically express my feelings more on this thing. Because, um... You know, if I'm not, then I guess what's the point? And so I was like, you know what? No, it's I'm I'm leaving it in. I don't think I was that mean to this person. I left it. I in when I was talking, I was like, you know, we're cool. Me and this Reddit lady are cool. If she ever, you know, whatever she hears this, we're cool. I said that. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna leave it in. I post the episode. I get a comment on YouTube. On the episode, I get a comment, and this is what the comment says. Hold on, let me pull this up. Let me pull this up real quick. I should have had this just ready to go, but um, hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, reading room. Okay, here it is. I get a comment, and the comments. I'm gonna just read this verbatim. This comment says. LMFAO, hi. This is, this is, I'm reading this verbatim. It says, LMFAO, hi. I was the bitch who complained about the birthday thing. I was just super excited to meet you and go on stage. But let me just say, I'm so sorry for being extra about that. I actually had a great time at the show. Despite that, LMAO, love you, Lyle. When I tell you I was so happy... To read that comment, shout out this Reddit lady. Shout out 
uh, 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 this lady who left this comment. I wrote back. I said, I said, thank you for apologizing. I really do appreciate it. Happy late birthday. It's so, um, first of all, yeah, if this lady's listening again, thank you for leaving that comment. That really made me, I really appreciate it. Um, and it was interesting to me because sometimes, like, it's just so rare. Because we all have, like, weird social interactions that we, like, regret or feel weird about. Either because, like, we were being an asshole or someone was being an asshole to us or whatever whatever it was. And, and you kind of just, you a lot of these things you just don't get closure on. And you just uh, have to kind of internally resolve. And so it's kind of a, a nice healing thing that is totally rare to read this comment and have this girl be like, I'm sorry, I don't know why I was upset about this. Uh, I, I liked the show and I appreciate you. And I got to be like, oh, I'm, thank you. I'm not mad. I appreciate you saying that. Happy fucking birthday, you know? So, I don't know. That was just a cool thing. I don't... There's got to be something to be gleaned from this about life. Uh, I, I, maybe it's that... Um, oh, I don't know. But I just really appreciated that interaction. And maybe... Maybe there's something to be gleaned about... I don't know. I don't know what... I, I don't want to... I want to take viewer mail. I don't want to sit here and um, think about what's to be gleaned of that. But I just wanted to share that. I thought that was cool. Anyway, um, oh, I have one other thing to share. I wrote down two things I wanted to share. Uh, this is random from my week. I was... Uh, I'm, <laughs> I was like just fucking... I was in my uh, apartment just being like stressed and annoyed and upset um, as is sometimes my like default state. And... Uh, Rand you ever like randomly remember something and start googling about it? I randomly remembered this news story that I heard back in 20 like 5 years ago, back in 2019 about this dude. His name is Kendrick Norton Jr. You can look this guy up, Kendrick Norton Jr. This is a guy, he this is an old news story. This is you know how some people have like podcasts where they talk about current events. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm only going to talk about uh uh, things that happened at minimum five years ago. I'm going to do the Slowpoke Current Events podcast. Anyway, there was this guy. I just randomly remember this news story. Guy, Kendrick Norton Jr. He was a, a football player, 22 years old. He got, like, drafted to the Miami Dolphins. And uh, I don't know exactly if he got to play, but if, if maybe he played, like, one game or whatever. I don't know the, the exact thing of it but he gets drafted to the Miami Dolphins huge you know set to make a bunch of money set to have a, an amazing career set to be on the national stage playing for his city the dream the dream he gets into a car accident and he fucking loses his entire right arm I remember I remembered hearing about this five years ago, and just being like, that fucking sucks, that's all, I just, remember, I don't know why, I just remembered this guy, and I remembered hearing about him, because he was all over the news, like, when it happened, and I was like, what's this, I was just like, I wanna, what's this guy, I just randomly remember this, I'm like, what's this guy up to, so I googled him, I found his Instagram, and uh, I was looking at his Instagram, and I saw a post from like a month ago, or something like that, and he's standing there, with no arm, huge smile on his face. He like started a career in real estate, and he in his comments he's talking about like uh, you know you gotta live life positively and you know there's all these pictures on his Instagram of like you know him with uh, with with friends and him doing stuff and being around and it's just he just seemed happy, and I was like. It made it really made me think about all the you know things that I'm afraid of in my life and um, things that stress me out and I'm like God damn dude this guy lost his whole fucking arm not only did he lose his whole fucking arm he lost like his dream job and he's happy and he's living his life and he's not letting it you know d destroy him it didn't let it, it he didn't let it destroy him he lost his whole fucking arm and I, I don't know I just I saw that. And I was, um, 
I was very inspired by this guy, and it made me think about my own life. Um, let me look at let me look at, it, at this again, just to so this. I'm, I'm this is my podcast now. This is what I'm doing. I'm reading viewer mail and talking about things that I'm thinking about. It's fun. Okay, what's yeah? What's this guy doing on Instagram? Yeah, dude, he's got a real estate company. He's got fucking. He's got a cool shirt. He's doing well. I don't know. I just, I'm inspired by this guy. I just wanted to share that. Okay, let's look at some of these emails. Um, all right. Let's see here. Uh, okay, this is from... This is from Finn. The subject is... Crossfaded Halloween Party. Oh, okay. This is way too long. I'm not going to read this. Uh, folks, just if you're ever going to... For the future. For the ref, For reference. Just for reference, uh, if you send me an email, if it's more than like two paragraphs, I'm probably not going to read it. So if, if I'm going to keep doing more of these and um, if you want me to read your email, just keep it to like, you know, a couple paragraphs and I'll be more likely to read it. Okay, anyway, um, let's get into... All right, this is from Noah. Subject, viewer mail episode dash Noah. That's a good... That's good. Okay. Hi, my name is Noah. I am 20. My addiction to Pokemon cards got to the point where I could not pay rent anymore. I used my credit card to buy thousands of dollars in very cool Pokemon cards thinking I would figure out how to pay rent later. I didn't. I sold a bunch of them to afford to have a roof over my head. My girlfriend is furious, my parents are disappointed, and my cat just got her lady parts removed, and the other cat was violently throwing up, so the vet bill was like two grand or some shit. Also, my car's transmission blew, so I have to walk to work now, I still have cool cards left, though. Here's my favorite. That's very funny. Hold on. Let me... He he sent an attachment. Oh, holy fuck. He's got a Charizard. Oh, what the fuck? All right. These actually are some pretty good cards. He's got a 2002 Charizard EX, and he's got a dark Charizard. I don't know. I don't know how much money either of those are, but anyway, he wrote... We actually spoke like six months ago about how your podcast helped me join the Pokemon card community. It has almost ruined my life. That's, oh no, I I remember you, Noah. Yeah, I literally, yeah, I remember we talked on the podcast and you were like, I want to get more involved in my community. And I told you to join the Pokemon card. Oh no. Did I fuck did I fuck your life up? He okay, he wrote not your fault though, love you Lyle. Um god damn, man. I mean you're 20. I don't you can I mean how much are you in debt? Look, if you blew all your money, whatever. How are you in Let's see, is he in debt? I used my credit card to buy thousands of dollars. All right, whatever. I don't know. I I guess this is a situation where I love going Dave Ramsey on people. It's fun. It's fun to um, talk about this kind of stuff. But I, this guy, if you just like had some money and you blew it and now you're in debt, you're probably doing better than, I mean, what? Okay, so the vet bill was two grand. What's the, no, okay, he's 20 years old. Let's Google this. What's the average net worth, average net worth, of 20 year old. I think the average net worth is like negative. I think it's most people. Okay, it says here that it's $7,500. I feel like that's not true. I feel like when you're like 20, I think that most people in 20 in, who are like 20 years old are like in debt. So whatever, as long as you're not like, if you lost all your, you have all your life to, you're only 20, you have all your life to build your financial universe to uh, some degree uh you know i don't know well it, it looks like you didn't go to college so you're actually in less debt i just i'm gonna say you're with pokemon cards and this vet bill 
let's assume you're in like $10,000 of debt, but you didn't go to college. You're probably in like less debt than a lot of other 20 year olds. So you're, you're going to be fine. Just like, don't just, I guess this is something to learn from. Let, wait, I'm going to read this email again and see if it seems like he learned from it. My addiction to Pokemon card. I used my credit card. I sold them to... Uh... He Maybe he learned... As long as he learned from it, he'll be fine. Noah, if you're listening to this, go on YouTube and listen to, like, fucking financial YouTube people and just try to get your shit together. If you don't go and buy more Pokemon cards, if you go and buy more Pokemon cards after this, you're you're fucked. But if you use this as a learning experience, I think you're going to be okay, Noah. All right, let's move on. Dear caffeinated gecko, this is from Patrick. By the way, I'm not on a cell. I did drink a Celsius this morning, but um, oh wait, Noah's in the ch- hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I'm looking at the chat. Noah's in the chat. Apparently, I'm I'm streaming live on Twitch right now. Uh, I am Noah. Uh, Noah, you're in the chat. How much debt are you in, Noah? What's your? Are you in debt? All right. While well, he answers that question, I'm gonna read this email. Um, dear caffeinated gecko. By the way, I, I I'm I'm on about 291 milligrams right now. I had a Mountain. I I I do diet Mountain Dew and I do Celsius. I do a Celsius in the morning and then a Diet Mountain Dew before the stream. You know, if you're wondering, if you wanted any health tips from me. All right, this is from Patrick. De- Hello, Celsius Gecko Man. I am wondering if you drink coffee. Um, eh, I'm not a huge coffee guy. I own a coffee roastery with my dad, and I want to gift you a custom Geckalicious coffee blend. If my morning juices can touch your lips. I don't know how I feel about that one. I will be eternally grateful. Also, I love you. Um, Thanks, Patrick. Crazy Goku hair guy at your last Arizona show. Well, thanks, Pat. Thanks for offering to send me stuff. Um, I don't... I don't want to take any of your things. Only because um, I appreciate your offer of them. But I don't want to take your things because I'm I'm not – if you send me coffee beans, I'm not going to use them. I'm, I'm just – I don't want to take your coffee beans as a nicety and then let them decay in my apartment until I eventually throw them away. That's what would realistically happen. Not because I don't think they're great coffee beans but because I just – so I'll use uh, if you can if you send me a Keurig even if you send me a Keurig cup, I'm just not gonna use it. So I'm gonna decline your offer. But good, I hope good. Uh, that's cool that you own a coffee roastery. Keep uh keep doing your thing. Let me look at it. He's he's got a website. Oh, he doesn't really. Oh wait, there he is. Okay, no, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. All right, let's move on. Um, this is from Caleb. Uh, subject line, a thousand plus calls from Boise. Hello, Therapy Gecko. I hope this email finds you well. As my subject line suggests, I have called you over a thousand times and have yet to hear back from you. This guy's also, he's putting an emoji after every sentence. He put a phone, he put a phone emoji After I have called you over a thousand times. Anyway, um, the first night I ever tried, I called 504 times in one night. The second time was only 50. The next few equaled a thousand. Okay, so I once I sent a reply to a live saying... Okay, once I sent a reply on your live stream saying, come to Boise, Idaho, and you said, quote, it's not a real place. I'm sure I did say that. That hurt my feelings, but I'm over it now. Um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think of what I mean when I say that's not a real place. You know what? I'm gonna, you know what, Caleb? I sincerely, I, I mean this sincerely. 
I want to I want to take that back. I'm in a better state of mind, I think, in this current moment than in the current moment in which I said that. And I want to take back saying that Boise, Idaho is is not a real place. It is a real place. There's people living there who say stuff and eat things. And that's just and that's that's a microcosm of what's going on in every other place in the entire planet Earth. And I, I, my true feeling is that every place is equally as real and not real because every place is kind of the same because every place is just people saying words and eating. So I take back saying that Boise is not a real place. Okay, you said, I'm over it now. I exist here, so it is real to me. I do know of three venues you could go. Oh, I'm not going to do it. I don't, uh, I'm probably not going to do a show there. I know of three venues you could go to if you ever want to discover that. Maybe you know what I. You know what I'm. You know what. You know what. I'm sorry. I take that back. Um, I can drive you around and show you the city. I'm an avid. I'm an avid explorer of the city. I take that back. I. I would do a show in Boise, Idaho. Why not? Why not? What venue? Uh, do you think, are you, Caleb? By the way, what did you? By the way, th- that's the end of his email. You call you. That was it. You called a thousand times and there was not another thing you wanted to... All right, man. Well, I can drive you around and show you the city. Here's an, I'm just going to use this as my own. I'm going to use this these viewer mail podcasts as my own therapy session. Um, I've been on these two... I, I just went on pretty much two back-to-back world tours. And actually, I love doing stuff like this. I really like... Caleb, if you ca- – Caleb – okay, let me finish my thoughts. I, I'm, I feel like I do this. I have like a thousand thoughts at once. I try to express them all. Um, I've, I've been on two back-to-back world tours, and I actually love doing stuff like this. Like like if I'm in a random place and I'm doing a show there and I meet some dude at a show and he's like, you want to get in my car and I'll drive you around Boise? I'll, I like doing shit like that. I've done shit like that. I, j- I did – like I was in um, – Sydney, Australia, and this group of folks after the show were like, hey, do you want to come to our house and jam with us? And I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. So I just went to these strangers' house and uh, muttered nonsense into a microphone while they like played guitar. It was a good time. Um, trying to think of other... I went to the strip club with some people after a show in Miami uh a few a few months ago i like i like doing shit like this so if i ever do if i ever do go to boise idaho and i and we're hang and i'm like packing all my shit up at the end of a show and you say hey do you want to get in my car and i'll drive you to this mountain in the middle of idaho there's a i'm not gonna i don't like to promise things i don't like to promise things there's a non-zero chance I would get in that car with you. But, um, like I said, I've been on two back-to-back world tours. I'm pretty tired. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to tour. It's going to be a little bit before I get back on the road after I finish these Europe shows. Um, but if I do, I'll, I, if, if I do, I'll look into Boise, Idaho. Anyway, I don't know. I, that was too long of a rant. I'm sorry. Thanks for your email, Caleb. Okay, um, okay, let's see here, um, this is from Kate, uh, sorry, this one is also a little too long, sorry, Kate, this is, all right, this is from, I'm gonna start looking at the emails first before I read their names, because I know a few of these people. Here's the thing, if I, uh, by the way, if you are listening to this and you think I said your name, by the way, there could be two Kates, there could be three. If you think I said your name, just send me the email again, but just keep it to two paragraphs, because I'm going to keep doing these. Anyway, this is from Dan. Hey man, I just wanted to say I'd be all in for calling in and discussing the current situation of modern dating that come with the trials and tribulations social media brings to the table. Would it be an absolute pleasure to shoot the shit with you? 
I watch your shit whenever I'm at home with a bottle of wine and soaking in the introspective, weird, and wonderful conversations you're blessed to experience. All my love, Dan. Oh, and I'm from the UK, so I guess that adds extra goodness to shooting the shit with you, because politics and violence is almost as fucked over here as it is in the US. Is that true? I don't know shit about UK politics. But if it's as fucked up as it is here, that's pretty wild. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, what's, what is dating like in the UK? What, I don't... Uh, yeah, that's, I guess that's a phone call conversation to have. But um, the social... Someone said... Okay, well, let me talk about this. He says that the... It come, okay, basically he wants to talk about how social media has affected dating. I think it's it has pros and cons. I mean, people who would have never ever met each other have now met each other because of um, the internet. It used to be for like all of I mean, think about this: for all of human fucking history, before like twenty years ago, think about it: all of human history compared to twenty meager years that's nothing for pretty much all of human history you just you had sex with whoever was next to you and you married them and that was it it was whoever was next to you it wasn't people are getting into relationships with folks across the planet from them okay this is just whoever was next to you it didn't matter if you guys got along I mean, you probably did get along because you were probably very similar people because you lived, you had the same exact influences. So maybe it was easier back. Maybe it was easier back then. I'm trying to debate if it was easier or not. You could say it was easier because back then you just got with whoever was right next to you, but it was a pretty good shot that they were compatible with you because they had the same upbringing as you and the same, um, cultural view of the world as you because there was no internet there was no anything and maybe and that probably you know what that probably made it a lot easier i'd give it to that but in like i don't know the 50s or whatever i thought who knows you just also kind of had your pick of the people who were around you and maybe in that situation maybe the people around you during that time is a possibility that they weren't as good for you as some lady uh, three thousand miles away that you were never ever 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 gonna meet without the internet but i also there's a paradox of choice and social media gives you infinite options and maybe that's not good I don't know, man. But you live in the UK. And also, everyone everyone you meet probably has a British accent, which is cool. All right, this is from Jaden. Subject, I'm having issues with my masculinity. Uh, Jaden says, dude, my prostate is so fucked, it's leaking green fluid, and I don't know what to do about it. My part. This is a one run-on sentence. There is no periods in this. I don't know what to do about it. My partner keeps saying I should go to a doctor, but it's too gross for me to even show them. Are you are you 12, dude? It looks like a greasy plane from Lord of the Rings swarmed with locusts. I think there's... All right, I'm not, I'm, I don't care about this. Uh, this is from Jonah. Uh, Jonah says, airplane sink or airplane urinal? Question mark, question mark, question mark. In all caps, you decide. Two exclamation points. Dearest Lyle, I've wanted to ask your opinion on this for literally years. Every time I fly, I opt to pee in the airplane sink instead of the toilet. Oh, my, thank God we're getting to some real shit with these emails. This is awesome. Thank I. There's more to this, and thank you so much for sending you this, sending me this email, Jonah. I'm so excited to read the rest of this email. Every time I fly, I opt to pee in the airplane sink instead of the toilet. I fully believe this is the best course of action when confronted with the airplane bathroom. 
A, I usually sit to pee, but three hours into a flight, the seat is already covered in pee of the less considerate. <laughs> This guy's complaining that he, that other people pee on the toilet seat, and so it's... But dude, you're peeing where other people are washing their hands. He says there. He says three hours into a flight, the seat is already covered. The seat is already covered in the pee of the less considerate. There is simply no way I'm opting to put my ass on that. Bro, Jonah, okay, hold on. Before, I'm going to read the rest of this email. Listen, Jonah. We have all, in public bathrooms, had to wipe the piss of another man off a toilet seat. And look, we have all, in our days, maybe accidentally pissed a little bit on the toilet seat. This is what we call the circle of life, okay? That's like, if you're peeing in a public bathroom... You might have to wipe another guy's piss off the toilet seat. Just just, just use multiple layers of toilet paper. Don't use one layer of toilet paper so that your fingers, it's kind of the piss bleeds through when you get another guy's piss on your hands. Just layer it up, wipe the pee, and quit, and quit fucking bitching. There is simply no way I'm going to put my ass on that. Okay, then he says, not only is the seat covered most of the time, but so is the floor. I have sympathy for those who can't aim because of turbulence, but it's still nasty. He says, you know what solves both of these problems? Pissing in the receptacle, which is high enough to properly, what is this word? Ensconce your Johnson. Preventing my pee from getting all over the cabin. Even though the sink is the obvious solution, I feel guilt that I am so far ahead of the rest of society. Please absolve me, great gecko. With love, plain sink pisser. I'm, thank you so much for sending me this email, Jonah. This is awesome. Um, but I disagree with how you... I disagree with this. Jonah, you're... Listen. Jonah, I understand that you are attempting to find a creative way to opt out of the public restroom dance. But I'm not so sure that pissing in the sink is that much... Hold on. I'm going to attempt to be open-minded about this. I'm going to really think about it. Peeing in the sink. Peeing in the sink. Do you wash the sink afterwards? Do you make sure there's no piss left in the sink? Do you put so do you wash like do you thoroughly wash out the sink? Shit. I'm I'm a little bit of the opinion that it doesn't matter. Where's that water go? I'm a little bit of the opinion that this guy peeing in the sink at, versus peeing in the toilet achieves the same result. As long as he cleans the toilet. But I, I let me, jo, uh, Jonah, why are you so above the public bathroom dance? I encourage you, Jonah, I encourage you. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Jonah, I encourage you to humble yourself. I encourage you to look at the experience of using a public bathroom as something that grounds you. As a as something that grounds you to society. Because we all need to be humbled every now and then, Jonah. No matter how great your life is going, how much money you make, you know, if your relationships are good, if you feel, if uh, no matter who you are, occasionally you gotta wipe a little bit of piss off of a toilet seat and it's good it's good to have those moments in life that humble you jonah so don't i would actually say that by pissing in the sink you are skipping a, a what is a great human life experience to have you're it's like it's like trying to cheat death basically you're trying to opt out of a natural human experience, and that's not good. 
So I think you should continue. I think you should stop peeing in the sink. And be learn to be okay with wiping another man's piss off of a toilet seat. It's not the worst thing in the world. What does the chat think? The chat says, uh... It all goes to the same place. I agree with that. I don't really think that this guy pissing in the sink matters that much. But I don't know. I mean, as long as he cleans the sink. All right. Let's move on. All right. This is from Megan. Subject line is freezing my neighbors with magic. I'm excited to read this. Hi, Gek. I wanted to tell you about how I recently moved in with my boyfriend. Um, our neighbors have been slightly irritating, and this is how I decided to resolve the issue. We moved in about two months ago, and I personally have been loving it. It's quiet and peaceful. However, we noticed a habit taking place where our neighbor will park in the handicapped spot without having any license to do so. The handicap spot? All right, I guess this is like a... Okay, this is like an apartment building that has handicap spots. We ignored it at first because we were new, but eventually we started to complain to management because these spots are right in front of our apartment entrance. I mean, are you... Are, are you... Are you, like, disabled and they're, they're, they're keeping... They're parking in your spot? Or is it just like you don't like the principle of it? Uh, we ignored it at first because we were new, but eventually we started to complain to management because these spots are right in front of our apartment entrance. They've also used our spots, which I don't think is a huge deal. But when you pay money to get an assigned place, it feels disrespectful. Why are you not mad? That, I would be mad about that. Why, were, why are you not mad that... The, you're mad about the principle that they're using the handicap spots, but you're not mad that they're in your spot. They've also used our spots, which I don't think is a huge deal, but when you pay money to get an assigned space, it feels disrespectful. No, that's fucking annoying. We've heard people scream, fuck your neighbors, late at night. And so the next day I started thinking how we could maybe stop some of the reckless behavior interfering with our home. I, is it... All right, I've got a, I've got very religious roots, but some of these new age trends have inspired me over the past couple of years. I've become very open minded when it comes to mixing my beliefs, regardless if they contradict. I decided that I would freeze my neighbor in hopes that it would slow some of the problems we've been having. And to my what the fuck? And to my surprise, it's worked absolutely fantastic so far. Once I created the freezer spell, it took about a day to see some results. It started with her car getting towed and fined. Needless to say, if you have immature neighbors who refuse to hear reason, I'd recommend you freeze them. I really don't know if I should give my real thoughts on this email. <laughs> I really don't know, dude. <laughs> it's so much easier because I'm removed. You know what is the main difference between doing this and doing the phone calls? If this woman, if I were talking to this woman right now, I would probably be more open-minded to her side of the events. And I would probably not as authentically express how I feel about this email. Um... Uh, oh god i really i really uh oh god what's the chat think um oh god bro i don't know here okay i have a few thoughts one somebody else parking in the handicaps parking parking space dick move dick move I'm kind of like, like, do do I need to like tell on them to management? Do I care that much? Probably not. If they're parking in my space, or if I'm handicapped, I understand telling them to management. But like, a, a freezer spell. 
I don't know, man. May I just... This is a person... Oh, God. Oh, man. I really want to tell him. All right. Here's what I actually believe. And, Megan, I think... I don't think you're a bad person. I don't want to start any fights with you. But, like... I think there are probably better things you could do with your time in life than coming up with spells to get your neighbor. Like, what do you... Do? Like, do you have a family? Do you have a job? Or do you have children? Like... Is there anything better you can be attempting to do with your life than any of the things that you're talking about in this email? You're here with your boyfriend. How's your relationship with your boyfriend going? How's he doing? How are you guys doing? Like, just... Is there... What else is going on in your life that could use more attention than your... Than your neighbors or spells? Ah, fuck. Now she's going to put a spell on me. All right, well... I don't know. That's my thought. Is just, I would just audit my life and I would audit my priorities and see if maybe there's something, something of higher priority than this to be uh, putting your, putting your time towards. That's it. That's all I think. All right, let's keep going. Uh, this is from Nicholas. Subject is Halloween. Happy Halloween, Gecko. I have two questions for you. Question number one. Are you going trick-or-treating? If yes, what are you dressing up as? Uh, I'm going to talk... I'm going to say something that's pretty depressing. But it's also a true feeling that I have. Which is that... I'm at an age now. I'm about... I'm about to be 27. And at 27 years old... Um, you know, I'm not in college... I'm not in high school. I'm not like a little kid. And I'm not old enough that I have little kids of my own. So at 20... If you're a 27-year-old single guy, the holidays are just like kind of... I just... Who gives a shit, really? Like, I don't really care about Christmas or Halloween. I... I just don't give a fuck about holidays. I... I like, when I was a little kid, trick-or-treating was exciting and Halloween was exciting. And, like, if I had kids, I'd be excited to, like, do Halloween shit with them. But, like, I don't give... I just don't give a shit about holidays. They're, they're kind of, like, annoying to me now. Like, New Year's Eve and Halloween and... They're just, like... They're just stressful. It just adds stress to my life to, like, think about what am I gonna do or, like, oh, if I don't, like, do something cool, I'm a loser... Uh, I don't care about thinking about a, a costume. I'm sorry, I know it's depressing, but that's how I feel about holidays. Is I just don't... They're just like nuisances to me right now. I don't care... I don't care about like doing a Halloween episode of my show. I don't care about coming up with a con... It's just... It's just kind of a nuisance right now. Um... Yeah, I mean, you, I don't, even, even honestly, even back when I was in college, um, it was like an or high school, it was a nuisance, right? Because like everyone's putting together their 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 New Year's plans, everyone's putting together their Halloween plans or whatever, and you you there's a, some stress to there about like oh I gotta I gotta make sure I'm like I have cool plans for these holidays and I don't know. Anyway, number two, uh, if you had to choose between saving 20 dogs and saving the McDonald's Corporation, which would you choose? If you had to choose between saving 20 dogs and saving the McDonald's Corporation, which one would you choose? Answer honestly. Love you, Gecko. What do you mean by saving the McDonald's Corporation? Like, I re I can't. I don't know if I can answer this question only because I do, like I don't know what does that mean like when you say saving the McDonald's corporation do you mean like if I choose the 20 dogs every McDonald's on earth explodes uh that would kill a lot more people than the 20 dogs so I'm unfortunately going to abstain from this situation only because I don't know what saving the McDonald's corporation means exactly if it doesn't mean that uh 
Does it mean I can't eat McDonald's anymore? I'm going to save McDonald's. Fuck the dogs. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I don't... If, if you... To, here, I'll say this. If you told me that if I ever ate McDonald's again, 20 dogs would die, I would, I would stop eating McDonald's. I'll say that. But, uh... I don't know what breed. What kind of dogs are they? Are they like tiny, annoying dogs, or are they like, like cute, fluffy dogs? What kind of dogs are they? All right, I'm sorry. Right, I'm I'm gonna keep going. Let's see here. Uh, all right, this is from Ashley. Hey, Lyle, we saw your show in Washington, D.C. and couldn't be more excited, so we got my mom to make these I Love Therapy Gecko shirts. Ah, I remember you, Ashley. I know I, I know exactly who you are. Her, uh, her business is Craft, Light, L, Craft Life LLC. We love you. And then she posted these. Yeah, these two folks at my D.C. show uh, wore, wore shirts that said I Love Therapy Gecko. That's so nice. Thank you, Ashley. I hope you guys are doing well. Yeah, I remember you guys. That was a fun show. All right, this is from this is from Joey. Okay, this is from Joey. Subject line: Feeling guilty after one of your live shows. All right, Joey says, "Hey Gek, a few years ago, my girlfriend at the time and I went to see one of your LA shows." Oh, this is, oh, the, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm looking at the picture from the show. This is from two, this is two years ago. This is May of 2022 is when this show was. Okay. A few years ago, my girlfriend at the time and I went to see one of your LA shows. You absolutely killed it, and we had a great time. Thank you, Joey. Afterwards, you did a meet and greet outside in the lobby, and I was so excited to ask you a question that I had been formulating for months prior. The question was, in the shower, do you wash your feet first or your asshole first. You and I went back and forth for a solid amount of time, deciding which would be worse, shit on your feet or dirt in your ass. We got to the bottom of the answer, parentheses, of which I've since forgotten, parentheses. Ah, it doesn't really matter. You, all, you get washed no matter what. And afterwards, we took a picture together and we went about our night. Leaving the venue, my girlfriend was very upset with me. I was so caught up in my question to you, as well as being starstruck meeting you for the first time, that I completely blanked on the fact that I had asked her to take the picture of us, disregarding the fact that she also wanted to be in the picture. Ah. Ah, oh, man. She was the one who introduced me to the podcast, after all. Suffice to say, I felt horrible afterwards. I was extremely apologetic, and she ultimately understood that my mind was going a million miles an hour, but I've never been able to escape the guilt of that night. We are no longer together, but we remain good friends to this day. I'm not sure why I felt the need to share this with you, but maybe you can help me find some closure. Thank you, kind sir, Joey. Damn. First of all, listen, listen, listen. Here's the thing. A few things. A few things. One, I I get you, man. I get you. You were probably you were probably you, it was. I don't think that you did the. I don't think that you snubbed your girlfriend out of like ignorance. It. I am willing to believe you were just like ah. Oh, you you know you feel bad about it. You were just like ah oh, fuck. I forgot. I'm so sorry. I didn't. I didn't fucking mean to do that. Um. Where's your? You guys are still friends. Like how good of friends? I'm doing a show in LA in like two weeks. Why don't you come to that one? We can all take a picture together. That she wanted to be in the picture. Why didn't did I take a picture with her too? Why didn't she ask to take a picture? I would have taken a picture with both of you guys. I guess I don't understand. Okay, I'll say this. I guess I don't understand. Like, if you two, you asked her to take a picture, but then why wasn't she just like, "Hey, let's all take a picture"? It, it, I get, I get where she's coming from. It would have been nice if you, if you, 
in your leading, it seems, of the interaction had been considerate of her. I understand that. I understand where she's coming from on that. But I don't know. Does she still listen? Whoever whoever your girlfriend is, while I'm coming, I'm going to be in L.A. I'm doing two shows. November 8th and 9th. Tell her to come through. We can, we can take a picture. Um, I don't know. What's the chat say? I agree. You sh I, why didn't... But why didn't she... All, why didn't she... She's not like... You're not... Here's what I understand. You're not like her like... Ca caretaker. Like she... Why didn't she just ask me to take a picture if she wanted a picture? I don't know. I get where I, I I get where she was coming from, but also I don't I don't know I I don't whatever. Tell her to come tell her to come through. We'll take a picture. We'll do it. What does the chat say? The chat says uh uh. She probably got flustered. Oh, okay. This is a good point made by Nervous Goblin in the chat. She probably got flustered by thinking he didn't want her in the picture. Okay, I understand. No, no. I'm not. By the way, I'm not discounting why this lady was mad. I understand why the why uh, why she felt the way that she felt. Someone says you are an intimidating figure, Gek. I really don't want to be. I really. I um. Anyway, all right. Let's keep going. Alright, this is from Lyle. Subject line, greetings fellow Lyle. Alright, I'm excited about this. Hello Lyle, my name is also Lyle. What's up Lyle? I am just curious how many other people you have met named Lyle. Not a lot. Not a lot. I am 31 years old and in my life, I have met two other people named Lyle. One of them being my dad. I am Lyle... I'm not going to read your last name. Um... One of them being my dad. Uh, that's crazy that your dad just gave you your name. I'd feel weird if I named my son Lyle. I would just think I was talking to myself the whole time. Sort of a weird story, but when I was 17, I broke my ankle really bad playing basketball. And my orthopedic surgeon was named Dr. Lyle. At one point, I was sitting in surgery consultation. And in the room was me, my dad, and Dr. Lyle. The doc is explaining to us some jargony medical explanation for my injury. And out of nowhere, my dad cuts him off and says, You know, doc, the three of us in here is probably the highest concentration of Lyles on Earth. I was thinking that too. That's crazy. Your dad is right. I don't meet a lot of Lyles. Hold on, I have to sneeze. <laughs> Fuck. I don't meet a lot of Lyles. And you and Dr. Lyle, you and your dad were probably the highest concentration of Lyles in one room on Earth. Dude, there's this thing called like the Ryan meetup where like a but there's obviously tons of Ryans. What if I did the lot where like a bunch of people named Ryan all got together and they had a party and there's I think there's a Facebook group or some shit like that. Um, what if I did a Lyle party? I was like, all Lyles are invited to this thing. How many Lyles are there? Can't be that many. If I threw a Lyle party in New York City, I bet only like if I got two other people to show up that were named Lyle, I'd be impressed. Is anyone else listening to this podcast? Maybe I, I would. That be an insane idea. Who who listens to this podcast and their name is Lyle? Are there a lot of Lyles? Are there a lot of us out there? That probably, the three of you guys probably was the highest concentration of Lyles on Earth. Anyway, hope all is well. Love to see a fellow Lyle out there doing his thing. Best Lyle. Well, goddamn, Lyle. I'm honored to, uh, this is a nice story. Tell your dad and your orthopedic surgeon I said what's up. Um, this is from Rebecca. Subject line, the little stuff. Hey, Lyle. Not really too sure what a viewer mail episode is or what it would even be like. Honestly, I'm not too sure what a lot of things are, but I like that about the universe. I've tried calling him before, but all I want to talk about is the little stuff, you know? 
Sometimes I have bad anxiety over stupid things and then I try to force myself out of it. This can be seen as noticing how the sunlight hits the walls of my apartment or even having a nice deep breath. Occasionally taking a walk and finding some trash on the ground that just so happens to look cinematic in that moment. It can be a good it can be good to reframe and I find it challenges me in the best way. Hold on, I want to actually comprehend um I sometimes I have bad anxiety over stupid things and I try to force myself. Oh, okay, these are this is how she forces herself out of anxiety. Okay, I got it. I love yeah, I love this. This is great. Anyway, I'm an illustrator. I had just done that drawing of you and MF Doom. Yo, I'm literally looking at that right now. Yeah, yo, fuck yeah, Rebecca. Yeah, you gave that to me in fucking Boston. I remember you. I totally remember you. What's up, Rebecca? Yeah, this person gave, drew a um, drew a rendition of me and MF Doom as if MF Doom was a gecko on my show, and I have it framed here in my in my office. Fuck yeah. No, I, I, I literally have that framed uh, right next to me. That's awesome. Uh, I was also wearing the Aqua Teen Hunger Force shirt. Yeah, I remember you, Rebecca. I sent a... Me and my high school friends are all big Adult Swim fans. I sent a message to my group chat that night. And I was like... And I said, a lady... I sent a, I sent, I sent a picture of the um, print. And I was like, a lady in an Aqua Teen Hunger Force shirt gave this to me. Yeah, that was awesome. I totally remember you. What's up? It was awesome seeing you in Boston, and I hope you come back soon. If you ever need design work or an illustration, feel free to reach out anytime. Thanks, man. Peace and love. Yeah, this is... No, here's the thing about the little stuff is um, it's real, right? Like, um, I often think a lot about, like, I'm, I'm in a big... I'm really, really trying to figure out how to, how to find, like, lasting happiness... And I do think a lot of it is in the little stuff. I was taking a... I, I had like a brief window as a week or two where I was really, really happy. And I was just walking around. And I was just saying to myself, like, fuck, I love life. I love looking at the s sunlight on the walls of shit. I love breathing and being like, oh my god, I can breathe. This is awesome. It's finding trash that looks cinematic. This is this person, the person who wrote this email, is gonna be fucking happy forever. I love the person who wrote this email. They're gonna be happy forever. Nothing is gonna fuck this person up because she figured out how to be happy looking at sun hitting a wall. What a this person's a genius. That's like. That's that's really it. If you can figure out how to there's there's really um there's really two ways I think to be happy in life. Maybe this is a work this is something I just thought about. You either achieve and hoard as many relationships and, you know, romantic or otherwise. Uh, you know, relationships and th and experiences and achievements, and just, you know, what are the classic stuff, right? You, you, you fill your life with as much of that shit as possible, and, and it makes you happy. Or, you take the baseline of what makes you happy, and you put it all the way down to breathing. You're like, all I need to be happy is the ability to fucking breathe, and I'm good. And I'm like, some, and I, I, I think you can live a life where you're kind of, um, again, this is the thing I think about a lot and talk about a lot in the podcast, is like balancing how much of your happiness is just having a good perspective on your life and kind of like internal work versus like actually having a good life, like external work. And when you when you can get the baseline of your happiness down to just like I'm just happy to breathe and look at the sun, you're doing great. So um, I'm uh, I'm stoked for you, Rebecca. I, if you have any advice for me on how to um, how to notice the sunlight more instead of thinking about 
you know, how the stock market is doing, please let me know. And thank you again for the MF Doom print. I love that shit. All right. This is from, uh, this is from Lucas. Oh, this one's too long. Sorry. Sorry, Lucas. It was a different Lucas. It was a different Lucas. Um, okay. This is from Finlay. Subject line, spray painting and uh, fear of... Subject line, spray painting and fear of people. This is from Finlay. Hey, Gek, I'm 18 years old and I live in Atlanta. But apart from that, I'm trying to get into the whole graffiti thing. But the main issue is that I'm not really the best. I have been practicing, but I was invited to go do this stuff with some pretty cool guys. These guys are, like, really cool, though, and I don't know how to talk to them. Also, my name is Finlay. Oh, wow, I love this email. Um, well, okay, a couple things. Here's a couple things. One, um, don't get arrested. Just, you know, I mean, graffiti. Whatever, who gives, uh, whatever. I mean, don't get arrested. Just be careful. Don't, uh... I don't know. Don't get arrested. But anyway, aside from that, um, if we're going to talk, if this wasn't a graffiti, I'm not going to be your fucking dad about it. But uh, let's talk about this. You're a nervous for two reasons that you've expressed. Reason number one is that you think you're not good enough at art to be there. And then reason number two is these people are really cool. And you don't know how to talk to them. You're afraid maybe you're not cool enough to hang out with them. Let's talk about that first. Here's the thing, Finlay. Remember this for the rest of your fucking life. If someone really is that cool, they'll be easy to talk to. And you won't need to impress them. Because if they're really that cool... They'll just be nice to you and cool to you, regardless of, like, how you are, regardless of how you're, like, presenting yourself, you know? As long, I, so, Finlay, as long as you're approaching your interactions in your life with, like, good faith, you know what I mean? You're trying your best to not be an asshole, you 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 have good faith intentions as you move through the world and you go out and you talk to people and you do things, you're fine, you know? And then if these people really are that cool, they'll be inviting to you. They'll be um, easy for you to talk to. They'll be, uh, you know... You won't feel on it. If these people are really that cool, you won't feel on edge with them. If you think these people are cool because they like dress a certain way or like they're good at art, that, you know, who gives a shit about any of that stuff? That doesn't fucking matter. So if these guys really are that cool, they'll be easy to hang out with and you won't need to worry about presenting yourself as some cool, fancy fucking art kid. So don't worry about that. Um, and then the whole thing about, like, I'm not that good at art. Bro, you're 18, and you're about to go to this weird graffiti tagging event. Who gives a shit if you're good at art? You're there to get into – you're there. You're not going there to be good at art. I mean, maybe you are. But you're really going there to, like, fucking get into a weird experience and socialize and get, get – build community got into the universe so whether or not you're good at the art doesn't doesn't really matter to me um good on you f for uh getting out there and uh doing some shit fear of people you wrote in your subject line good on you guy like i like this guy a lot i really do i like this guy a lot because he's afraid of people and afraid of social interaction it seems but you know what he's gonna go anyway that's what i like about that's what i like about finlay he's gonna go no matter what hopefully as long as you go just go finlay just go approach your interactions with good faith 
and with the intention that you want to meet people and have fun and do your shit. And, uh, and you're good, man. Um, all right. Holy shit. Uh, this, all right, this email is way too long. Yeah, once again, I, I didn't specify this, but try to keep your email between, um, you know, uh, like maybe like two paragraphs. Um, subject line, this is from Ryan, subject line, Therapy Gecko Hates Canada. Gek, love you, man. Love your podcast. Thank you, Ryan. Canada is a, all caps, huge ass country with many, many cities and towns from West Coast. And on this current tour, you only have one Canadian city. Uh, he wrote a bunch of other stuff um, that I'm not going to read. But uh, what is it, Gek? Is the ketchup chips driving you away from our country? I love ketchup chips. I love ketchup chips, Ryan. I don't hate Canada. I'm just tired. <laughs> uh, I'd like. I would. I would like to do like a um, whole ass like real Canada tour and go to like Montreal and Vancouver and Winnipeg and all that stuff. I'm just. I'm just kind of tired. Um, but thank you, Ryan. Thanks for listening to the show. And I and I don't hate Canada. I actually like Canada a lot. Um, I walked across. I had a great time when I went to Toronto. I walked across the Canadian border from Buffalo. To Canada, I just I was like standing with my little suitcase of T-shirts. I might have told this story on the podcast already, but I'm going to tell it again. I was walking across the Canadian border from Buffalo into Canada, and I was in like the I was just I was just had a backpack and a duffel bag full of shirts, um, and I'm like standing in line with a bunch of cars. I'm the only pedestrian. It's like very much meant for cars. And uh, I get to the border agent and he's like, he, he, he looks at my big ass duffel bag and he goes, are there any drugs or weapons in the bag? And I was like, uh, no. And he was like, all right, cool, man. Well, enjoy Canada. He didn't even check. And that is why Canada... That, okay, I know... You know what? Okay, you know how I said Boise wasn't a real place? Canada... I don't hate Canada, but it's kind of not a real place. Because th- I feel like in a real place, they, like, check your bag if you're crossing from one country into another. So Canada... I mean, Canada's kind of real. I like Canada. I like Canada, but it's only kind of real. Thank you for listening to the show, Ryan. Okay, this is from Evan... Uh, subject viewer mail episode. Evan says, my girlfriend that I live with has dyspraxia and struggles to know left from right. I'm the driver in the relationship. What is dyspraxia? I've never heard of this in my life. Dyspraxia is a neurological development disorder that affects a person's ability to coordinate physical movements. Um, okay, you said my girlfriend has dyspraxia. All this is a two sentence long. My girlfriend has dyspraxia and struggles to know left from right. I'm the driver in the relationship. First of all, that's a weird sentence. I don't like that sentence. I'm the driver in the relationship. Oh, okay. Hold on. I Oh, okay. I'm an idiot. I thought he meant like... I thought he meant like metaphorically. I think he literally just means he drives the car. Unless if he means like he's the meta... He's the like top dog in the relationship. That's what I thought he meant. I think he literally means he drives the car. Okay. Uh, okay, in that case, that would make sense. All right, I don't really know what else to do with this email. So let's move on. Uh, yeah, this email is stupid. Um, okay, this is from Matt. Subject line, my hedgehog story. 
Dear Mr. T. Gecko, I like that. Thank you for taking the time to read my email. Attached is a story for you and your viewers. We have to go back to 1996 when I was in kindergarten. It was winter vacation, and I got to take the class pet home over the break. It was a hedgehog, and we didn't know what to feed it. My parents gave it a bunch of mealworms, and it ate them like all-you-could-eat shrimp. We found it the next morning, and it was dead. We thought the mealworms poisoned the hedgehog, and we had a private burial in our backyard. Not so fast now, Sonic. That was stupid. I wish I didn't say that, but I'm leaving it in. Uh, for years, when I encountered mealworms, I would reflect that they're poisonous to hedgehogs. Until very recently, I didn't know the truth. Hedgehogs hibernate. They gorge themselves on insects before hibernation. And that big mealworm probably... Oh, okay. And that big mealworm meal probably triggered its hibernation. Oh my god. We accidentally buried that poor hedgehog six feet deep in the backyard alive because we thought it was high because we thought it was dead when it was really hibernating. Oh no. That's really sad. That's really fucked up. That's a crazy story. He says, imagine he says. Imagine having a really big meal, like hot pot, or all-you-can-eat shrimp, and taking a deep nap and waking up buried underground. Big yikes. Jesus. That's a fucked up... <laughs> that's a really fucked up story. Goddamn. Um... Oh... Yeah, that sucks. At least, I guess at least he died. Well, I was going to say at least he died, um, you know, having a big meal, but he didn't die. He, he, he died suffocating in a box. By the way, six feet. Did you really bury that motherfucker six feet? Six feet's a little deep for a hedgehog. That sucks. It sucks to be that hedgehog. Um, yeah, that's a fucked up story. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for telling it. I guess I hope you don't go to hell because of that. But I don't know. Maybe you maybe you die and you go to the gates of Saint Peter and Shadow the Hedgehog is there and he banishes you to hell forever. All right, I'll read one more. All right, here's one. Um, this is Alec. Subject line: Sad rapper. Hey man, I hope this email finds you. I like that. It's very neutral. I am a musician from Massachusetts. I spent all of high school playing saxophone to get into Berklee College of Music, which is considered one of the most prestigious contemporary music colleges in the world, and I got in. But after four years of playing sax in college, I lost my love for it. Practicing sax became a chore that I never wanted to do, and I ended up resenting the instrument. I have recently found a new passion, comedic rap. I love it, but I am worried that I don't have the social media personality, the connections, the looks and age, or even the actual skill to do it. And I feel like a piece of shit for wasting my college years and putting myself in debt just to never play the sax again. I'm afraid now to go all in on this since it is a big risk considering the subject matter. My question for you is, would you listen to my very first rap song that I ever wrote? And then he sent me a link. I'll listen to it later. I can't listen to it right now. And then he says, and is this something you think I should pursue? Thank you for reading. I hope my song brings a smile to your face. Mr. Best. Um... Wait, Alec, have we talked before? Did we talk on the podcast? Anyway, I, I'll, I, I will listen to your song later, but I don't want to listen to it right now. And truthfully, my response to this email, I don't need to listen to this to respond to the things that you you are saying in your email of whether or not I think this is something you should pursue. Um, 
I empathize with your struggle, man. I really do. I think, um, I think I definitely understand, um, you know, something that you, that you really like and have passion for, like becoming a chore and then you ended up resenting it. Um, I've been having a lot of life epi epiphanies lately, Alec, and one of the life epiphanies that I've been having lately is that nothing really fucking matters except what you are actually doing, like the literal process of what you are actually doing, and then like who you're around, like who you're doing what you're doing with. Um, and so the question of should you pursue it, if you like doing this, like you simply enjoy the process of rapping, you should do it until you don't fucking like doing it anymore. If you're put, if you're in a whole thing of like, oh, I, 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 I'm just doing this to like, fucking, like, because you're put, you're putting a whole thing on it of like, oh, I need to make money doing this, I need to be successful doing this. Um, you're just gonna end up presenting it again, dude. You're just gonna end up presenting it again. Like, if you really, I, I, if you really want, dude, go fucking do something else for money, and then make raps because you like making raps. You're not going to suddenly like it more because it's successful. You you have a baseline of whether or not you like it. So if if it if you're if you're enjoying doing it, keep fucking doing it. Keep fucking doing it. Um I also don't think that you uh, what else what else is he read in this email? I don't think you wasted any I mean you you wasted a bunch of money. You totally you totally did waste a bunch of money. But you didn't waste any time. You didn't waste any time because you liked playing the sax. In the moment that you were doing it. And maybe you had fun in college. Maybe you, I don't know, did cocaine once or something and you had fun. Uh, so yeah, of course you should keep doing it. I don't need to listen to this to know if you should keep doing it or not. Um... You just do things that you like and then die. I think that's how life works. But I don't know. I'm also, by the way, a huge fucking hypocrite. Just so you know. Um, I do things I don't want to do for um, in life all the time. Um, but yeah, anyway. You just keep going, Alec. <sighs> well, that's it. This is the end of the episode. I don't know. I hope this was good. I hope this was good. I don't know if this was good. I don't know if I... I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed ranting and rambling. I hope it was of value. That's all. That's what I... I really care about two things with this podcast. I really care about, like, if I'm enjoying doing it and if the people who are listening are getting value out of it. I hope the people listening are getting value out of it. I hope that if you, if, I mean, if you're here, if you're still here, this is the end of the episode. This is, we've been recording for how long? Uh, like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. I just hope you enjoyed, um, listening to this. I hope it was worth it. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening. I don't know how often I'm going to do this. So I'm going to probably do this. I'm, there might, there, a universe exists where I do this once a week. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I read every comment. I shouldn't say that because then whatever. But I do. I read every comment. Um, so just let me know what you think in the Spotify comments or the YouTube comments of this viewer mail episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I got some shows coming up in Europe. And in Los Angeles and Minneapolis. And then I'm probably going to take a break from the road for, for a, a long time. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening. And I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, take care. Good luck. Bye, everyone.